The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please, come lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, if I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside, except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, He caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And then they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha, kum, which means Little girl, I say to you, arise. The the girl, a child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. The number 12 in biblical numerology is a sign of the perfect society. It's a sign of the perfection of governance of that society. It's for that reason that Jacob had 12 sons, and the 12 sons had 12 tribes that eventually become a whole nation. But it's not the only society that exists. Twelve can be a kind of sign of the authority of those who govern in a society. This woman had a hemorrhage for 12 years. That is to say, she was under the domination of a kind of a kingdom of suffering. If you ever had had grieve physical illness or loved ones who have been gravely ill, you know that kingdom. Your whole life is under the authority of dealing with the illness with the affliction, trying to get the medications, trying to make things work out, getting to the next appointment, asking the questions, are the insurance going to cover it? It dominates your life. The little girl was 12 years old. It's the age of betrothal for the ketuvah. It's the most beautiful moment or time in the life of a young girl. It's when her future is before her, And she's beginning to enter into God's plan for her own life. And tragedy can be a kingdom. If you have ever suffered tragic loss of someone that you love, that also can become a kingdom for you. 
It can dominate the way that you think. It can dominate the way that you spend your time. Suffering and tragedy can have a kind of domination over your life. So into the kingdom of grave suffering, the woman with the hemorrhage, and the kingdom of tragedy, the child who has died, Jesus brings a new kingdom. And it's a kingdom that will transform suffering and death when it is united with his suffering and death into something very powerful. Something now that is not to be avoided or to dominate our lives, but something that is to be embraced with God's will and trust so it opens new fountains of grace. The whole perspective of Jesus is informed by the love of his heart. The love of the good shepherd who sees the suffering and he sees the death and he cares for those that are sick and he cares for those that are dying or have died. And whoever he touches, whoever he teaches, the encounter with Christ always brings life. Today we celebrate the life of a saint, an extraordinary young man, who when he was 10 years old had a dream. Growing up in Turin, born in the year 1815, just before the Industrial Revolution, just before Marx and Engels were right, Das Kapital, the basis for Marxism and Communism, just before the publication of the Encyclopedia in Paris, which would be the kind of culmination of scientific rationalism and all the fruits that are going to come from the machinery of a society without God. It will be another kind of kingdom, and it will bring death and suffering. And the ones that will suffer the most are the elderly, the poor, and the children. God placed in the heart of this 10-year-old boy something very special. He had a dream, and in the dream, he was fighting on the playground, and he's taking out kind of his own anger on these other boys that are fighting him, but he's fighting them because they're using poor language, they have poor manners, and all of a sudden this man appears to him in the dream, and the man tells him, says, you will not conquer them with violence, but you will conquer them with love, and the boy in the dream asks the man in white, how do I do that? And the one dressed in white says, I will send you my mother who will teach you. It was the first dream that John Bosco had, the first of many prophetic dreams that would guide his life and his mission. He would eventually be ordained at the age of 26 years old, and his mentor was a parish priest in Turin who himself became a saint. Saints form saints. His first assignment as a parochial vicar was to be with this other saint priest. And the saint priest told him, I want you to come with me somewhere, and I want you to learn what's really happening in our own neighborhood. The priest took Father John Bosco to the prison. And he went into the prison and was filled with young boys. John Bosco, when he writes the the description, he says, they looked worse than animals. They were covered in lice, they were unkept, they were violent with each other, but then something stirred in his heart said, this is what they reveal now, but if someone would only teach them with love. St. John Bosco's life would be to enter into this kingdom of dehumanization, that was the modern project, and to bring a new kingdom. It would be the kingdom of the woman crowned with 12 stars, the fullness of governing authority. And it would be the kingdom of the one who would establish a new society governed by 12 judges that will celebrate the sacraments, that will be the vessels of God's love. And so through the maternal love of Our Lady and the abode of love of Jesus in the Eucharist, a new kingdom will be built one heart at a time. St. John Bosco would open a home where these boys from prison could come when they finished their sentence. And then he would begin to teach them the basics of human formation. How to eat, how to sit, how to say yes, sir, no, sir, thank you, please. That was wonderful. Have a beautiful day. God bless you. Things that these boys had never heard in their life. And he saw that love began to change them. 
Love began to form a new culture in them. It came time then for the boys to move on, and some of the boys told St. John Bosco, because of the love that we found here, we want to stay, and we, we want to help you serve the other boys that don't, that don't know the love of God. That's a new culture. That's a culture that has touched the heart of these young men who now become the ones that will touch the hearts of the other young men, eventually becoming the Society of the Salesians of St. John Bosco. There are many kingdoms out there, and they're very powerful. And the only way they can be defeated, those that oppress the human person, is by the kingdom that Christ brings, which is the kingdom of love. And that kingdom only comes when a heart is willing to be transformed by the power of that love and make concrete choices according to that logic. And that works. That changes hearts and lives and minds, and it brings a kingdom of God in our midst. Let us conclude with these words of our mother foundress. The love of the heart of Jesus is a love that will stop at nothing, absolutely nothing in order to save us, to free us, to heal us, and to give us, to, to give to us his life of grace and holiness. In this life he gives above all through his saints. All for the heart of Jesus. For the heart of Jesus.